The second issue that we talked about was the fact that no underlaps were performed. Luis de la Fonte fixed this issue after the first half ended. So in contrast to what happened in the first half, where Spain took multiple shots from outside the box, now they wanted to push numbers inside the box and go for crosses instead. And that's exactly how the only goal was scored. Hello there everyone, it is Mitsu here and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we will have an in-depth analysis of yesterday's game between Spain and Italy. So starting off, both teams used a 4-3-3 formation as you can see on the screen. Spain was looking better with the ball, especially during the first half. But the stats even show that they were the better side throughout the match. When building up, Spalletti wanted to mark Rodri to stop Spain from relying on his abilities when carrying the ball out. However, this was not executed properly, as Italy did not apply proper high pressure, so Spain always found solutions on the sides. The marking on Rodri took place only when Spain was building up from the back, with Unai Simon for example, but then the sides were always free to receive the ball. Spain was also able to win second balls most of the times even if they were forced to clear the ball away. This was repeated multiple times throughout the first half. The issue here was the fact that once Spain got out with the ball, Italy would get back to a medium or a low block depending on the position of the ball up the field. And when that happens, Rodri is not marked anymore. Now, this was the most important part of the game. During the attacking phase, Spain were not able to play deep passes between Italy's block. Italy's defensive phase was decent. They were able to keep all the Spanish players outside their medium or low block depending on the situation. This forced Spain to launch long balls to Williams, which was something that we saw multiple times during the first half. Williams had plenty of time on the ball, and was able to create a lot of threat. However, although Italy's defensive phase was alright, you can say that it was more of a lack of attacking numbers for Spain, which stopped them from converting those chances. Basically, whenever Williams had the ball on the side, Kukurea always had an opportunity to perform either an overlap or an underlap. Williams played wide in this game, so Kukurea actually had chances to perform multiple underlaps during the first half. But he was not pushing forward enough, so this left Williams in multiple 1 vs 1 situations. Although he was able to deliver and beat his man, more numbers in the final third would have created more solutions for Spain. Now the reason Spain was forced to play these long balls to Williams on the side was again due to how Italy stopped all the Spanish players from receiving the ball inside the block. We saw multiple situations where no players were positioned between the lines, and you can see that everyone is forced to be positioned out wide. Also, whenever any player from Spain tried to ask for passes inside the block, they were closely marked as you can see. In these situations, you need a lot of runs from the wingers to catch the opposition out of shape. For example, in this case, the centre-back is already out of possession as he was marking Pedri. But no runs were made from any attacker to exploit the space. So, you could say that although Italy were doing alright defensively, Spain were not pushing strong enough if that makes sense. As ultimately, you want to play direct passes on the ground to any player inside the block to transition your attack. Luis de la Fonte was actually able to solve all these problems, and that's how Spain outperformed Italy in this game. We will get back to that in a minute, but let's first see how Spain performed without the ball. Spain applied very high pressure whenever Italy were trying to carry the ball out from the back. We could say that both teams were able to adapt and deal with the pressure pretty well throughout the game though. Yes, we saw some mistakes here and there, but what Spalletti wanted to do is basically welcome some pressure and then play a medium pass to Barella in the middle, and this way Italy was able to perform quick counter-attacks. The counter-attacks were not executed properly, but the idea was to always find Barella in the middle of the pitch after welcoming a lot of pressure and then make sure that the medium pass goes over 5, 6 or even 7 Spanish players in order to complete the transition. Barella was able to deliver this role throughout the first half as well, but if Barella was not free in the middle, or if the pressure was not high enough, a similar pass would be played to any player from the forward line. Now back to the solutions that Luis de la Fonte used to outperform Italy during this game. With the ball, the first solution to the problems we discussed earlier was to find direct passes to be played between the lines. This was seen multiple times towards the end of the first half. For example, you can see here how Rodri picks up Lamine Yamal. With these passes, Luis de la Fonte wanted his players to receive the ball and turn quickly towards the goal, rather than actually keeping the possession between Italy's block. 
This worked pretty well, as Pen started creating more concrete chances after performing these deep passes. Pedri especially received a lot of passes between the lines and was responsible to complete this quick transition into the final third. This video is brought to you by Play Biometrica Sports, the fundamental tool for every coach and analyst. Create and manage all your video analysis in one platform. Use the coupon MitsujiR at the checkout for a 10% discount. The second issue that we talked about was the fact that no underlaps were performed. Luis De La Fonte fixed this issue after the first half ended. Just as the second half kicked off, we saw multiple underlaps from the two fullbacks, Kukurea and Carvajal. So, in contrast to what happened in the first half, where Spain took multiple shots from outside the box, Now they wanted to push numbers inside the box and go for crosses instead. You can see from these examples how with just a simple tactical change, Italy's defensive shape started to look extremely poor compared to how it looked like during the first half of the game. So this shape continued for like the first 10 to 15 minutes of the second half, where the winger would pull the defenders out wide and the fullback performs the underlap. And that's exactly how the only goal was scored. Again, Kukaria performing an underlap and grabbing the attention of three players, leaving Williams in a 1 vs 1 situation, who was then able to beat his man and cross the ball inside. After the goal, Italy started getting some possession on the ball, which was expected. But Spain did not go for a low block or play defensively, they kept this shape that you can see on the screen. Italy also tried to push multiple numbers between the lines, but their attacking efforts were not enough. And Spain even created more threat with multiple counter-attacks, but Donnarumma was having a good game. So that was it guys, I hope you have enjoyed the analysis. It has been a very very long time since my last upload, I've been really busy this year, uh, I was not able to create any time to upload anything on the channel. Uh, I actually received a lot of comments and Instagram DMs asking me where I have been, so yeah, sorry guys for the long break, I guess. But I'm back now and I'll try to stick to my uploading schedule. I'll actually try to upload more videos during the Euros to cover as many matches as possible. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you want me to analyze any specific team and make sure to check out my accounts on Instagram and TikTok as I'll be uploading short form content like the videos you see here over there as well. If you prefer specific type of content on these platforms, make sure to let me know in the comments as well. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.